Hi, I'm Paul Hale, Production Director here at Infinity Ward. And I'm Mitch Sanborn, Director of Online Engineering. And we're here to talk about the Call of Duty Modern Warfare Network Model, otherwise known as the Netcode. In simple terms, Modern Warfare and other client-server model games are composed of a set of clients all interacting with a remote server. Each client is a player interacting with the game and sending their inputs up to the server. At the same time, the server is gathering all the player's inputs and processing them before sending the results back to each client. Right, so in this model, the server is authoritative, meaning that whatever the server says goes. The server sends state down to all the clients and their job is really just to visualize it. All the clients sample input from the keyboard and controller and they, they predictively move themselves, but the server is the one who executes that authoritatively and sends the results back to all of the clients. And so both the server and the client process this same input to move the player around in the world. So there's a server, it's getting all this input, and there's clients moving around, all sending their input to the server. In an ideal world, that just works. All the clients send their input, the server gets that input, processes it, and sends that back to the clients. So let's talk about what happens when there's a bad connection or a lag spike or something like that. What can go wrong in this model? There's a couple of things that would constitute a quote unquote bad connection, um, but we're primarily concerned with variance. That is, we didn't get some data when we thought we would get it. Uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is that the client doesn't get some information from the server. What happens in that case? The data coming from the server is the state of the world. So when you miss a beat, you don't really know what to draw anymore. So in this case, the world just stops moving because the client doesn't really know what to do next. Or we end up extrapolating and we might get it wrong and then the world kind of snaps around. So there's a number of reasons this can happen. Typically, there's a problem where packets coming from the server are constrained in some way. Uh, a lot of times there's noise or some other source of interference on a wireless signal like your home Wi-Fi. But you can also have ISPs shaping packets. You can have a CPU spike on the server or even on the client. Your router can start buffering packets. There's a lot of variables in how long it takes a packet to get from point A over to point B. The server, as well, is, is it's just going to keep ticking, right? It's not, it's not beholden to any of the clients. Other people are playing the game too, and they need that server state, otherwise they won't be able to draw the world. So all games that work in a client-server model have to handle this problem. Um, if we didn't, the client would hitch around and, and it would be so frequent that the game would be just unplayable. And the solution here is really, you have to, you have to buffer data, right? So we push the client as close as we can to the latest data from the server that the client has. We do some signal analysis on the rate of packet delivery, and based on that rate, we, we decide how close we can get without running out of data from the server. And then we throttle up or down uh, to reach that closest point with the client. From the telemetry we gathered during our beta, we can tell this was actually very successful. We were riding right up to the edge of where we needed to be without really frequently overstepping that bound. We will, of course, continue to measure and continue to iterate on that, but we're pretty happy with the results that we've had so far. So it sounds to me like the client self-regulates based on what the server is giving it. So let's talk about the other side. What happens when the server is not getting enough data from a client? Different games do different things with this. In the past, like five or six years ago, uh, we, we just did nothing, which is totally an option. It's just not a very good option, right? So what happens here is that the server just doesn't have any data for the client. So the solution is to just not move him. Then you get a dump of data from the client and you just slam him to the new position of processing all of those packets. And this is pretty awful, right? The client ends up jumping around. Right, so obviously we can't do that. Players will just be teleporting around everywhere and you can't really play like that. So there are other ways that we do deal with this now. One of the options that we use is we just fake it. Um, so you can extrapolate this is where we grab the last input that we did receive from the client, and we just sort of just assume that the client's still doing the same thing. Hmm. Um, then when you finally do get data from the client, you unwind that extrapolation. You go back uh, and you fill it in with the, what the client actually did. Um, the problem here is that sometimes you get it wrong, and you can see that when there's a sudden change of direction or acceleration in this video, right, where uh, he suddenly changes direction and then there's this small pop because the extrapolation had put them in the wrong spot and when we ran the real data, he was somewhere else. Right. So if you don't want that kind of snapping, uh, you can also pretend the input was the real input. Um, and we call this sort of like a prediction, right? You're predicting what the client would have actually sent you by just saying, well, the last thing you sent me is now the real thing that you sent me. 
Um, so this, this is an extrapolation, right? We're, we're actually predicting client input here. And because the server is authoritative, uh, you can just make this happen, right? You can put the client there and, uh, and everyone will just see it. And, and, and this will result in, in smooth movement, but you'll cause mispredictions for that one client who's having, who's having network issues. And so too much of this, and that game becomes unplayable by that client now. Mm -hmm. Finally, to sort of solve all of that, you can, you can buffer data, right? Which produces nice smooth movement um, because you're actually executing real, real data. But if you don't do anything at the start, right? If you didn't, if you starve for data for some period of time uh, and you didn't have anything in the buffer, you're still gonna get that hitching until you get enough data from the client to, to compensate for that and you fill your buffer up and then you start pulling from the buffer when you get that starvation. The other problem with buffering is that it induces latency, right? Like you end up with just packets hanging out in a buffer for some period of time. And, and this is when we talk about like full system latency. This is part of that equation and it ends up being quite a large part of that equation if you get it wrong. So we've written this engine to support all the options. In the live environment, we mix and match according to the network conditions so that we optimize for low latency. At the same time, we control for players where network conditions suck so they don't ruin the match for everybody else. So let's talk about how this technology applies to a classic situation like when I get killed while I'm running for cover. Right. So if you're in the open, you know, maybe casually reloading your SMG or whatever, minding your own business, and then you see the sniper glint, right? And you decide, I'm going to run for cover. Um, this is a long road to travel, both for you now and your packet, right? Your position in the open goes to the server, right? That packet goes up to the server, and the server puts you in the resulting position, which is out in the open. And then that packet goes down to the other client who sees you out in the open, and he pulls his trigger, and this is going to be the kill shot. That packet then goes back up to the server, where the server executes that action authoritatively, and sends the result back to you. So the longer the total latency in the system, the further behind that rock you're going to get. Extrapolation actually helps us to beat latency, right? Like if we guess right, we're actually beating the round trip time of that packet by inferring where you're going to be before you've actually told us where you're going to be. We'd like to favor extrapolation and prediction to reduce latency, but only to a point where we have to fall back on buffering in order to really properly execute. So it sounds to me like it's really a delicate balance between all three of these solutions. Yeah, and we adjust that dynamically according to connectivity for each individual client in the game, right? So it's not like somebody has a bad connection and then the whole game is ruined. Right, right. So the code in, in Modern Warfare was designed to be as flexible as possible. We really want players to know that we take how Modern Warfare feels in online play very seriously. We've built these multiple layers of systems on top of each other, along with the knobs to sort of tweak them in real time. We're constantly measuring server behavior, client behavior. We're looking into individual players' experiences. We're collecting tons of data. We're doing internal testing. We're doing testing with small populations out in the live environment. And then we're rolling out improvements as the game is live. We did this during the beta and we'll continue to do it once we hit October 25th and the game goes live. Quick shout out to those of you who participated in the beta. Thank you so much. Your data was super valuable to us. In the end, our goals are simple. We start from a good place, and we make sure that the game feels amazing in low latency situations. Then we build these systems on top of it to make sure that the game is tolerant to network issues, because the internet is the internet and problems will happen. Then we try to isolate issues so that when bad things happen, we don't let it ruin a whole match, and we keep the problem to just the problem connection. So I think that about wraps it up for us. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this has been informative for you. Uh, let me know what you think of the video, and if you liked it, maybe we'll do more in the future. Thanks again for playing the beta, and. We'll see you online when Modern Warfare releases on October 25th.